So let's begin. So my name is Vasily Mishenko. Uh, I'm uh, the expert in IT and robotic technology with more than, uh, than 20 years experience. And uh, today I, uh, I'm happy to, to see you and I'm happy to share with you uh, uh, my experience of uh, building and creating an autonomous scalable factory. Uh, I believe uh, in our team, we believe that it's going to be value valuable as a, as a new method. Uh, but it is more important for me, you know, not only uh, sharing the, my knowledge and experience with you, but uh, but getting feedback. Uh, I don't suppose, you know, that every one of us could, could expect himself like a, a know everything, knows everything, right? So that's uh, after our mm, uh, webinar and uh, Q&A session, uh, please don't hesitate to share uh, and challenge even me, so that I would be, I would, be, I would appreciate it very much. So that's uh, today we will do. <clears throat> we'll touch a bit um, the, the concept. It's not going to be the deep dive, I would say, uh, if you like it. Uh, so we, uh, I will organize another uh, series of sessions. Uh, you know, we will touch in details some I in every technology. So let's start. So. What's what's the problem? So that's uh, traditional uh, traditional manufacturing. Uh, it's been polishing. I mean, more than fifty years since the first robot uh, came to the shop floor. It was in nineteen sixties, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and it's already um, has been has proved uh, proved itself. I mean, very efficient, uh, very efficient way, best unit economy, um, economy of scale. Uh, what's the problem? The problem is that you. You need to be a really big guy uh, to afford to afford uh, uh, modern modern mass production. You can see the numbers even for such small uh, factory of uh, 10 10k uh, per year, for example, 10 10 vehicles per year, 10 10,000 vehicles per year. The cost of the factory will start from uh, 300 millions, and I would say uh, even this is not achievable because usually uh, the integrators and the companies who build the factory. Or companies like uh, such Tesla, or Mercedes, uh, or Toyota, they will start with an output of, I would say, one million or at least half of the million uh, per year output of the factory. So in this case, it's not only about of money, but it's about of time. Uh, so that's every factory right now. Of course, I know that Tesla has uh, has uh, broken the record, but still, even Tesla, uh, it took uh, it took them I mean several years uh, to launch even Berlin factory. So we love diversity changes and local communities. And in this case, I mean, so that's if the, you know, big company can afford uh, waiting of five years and spend like a half a billion, what the other like businesses can do, especially those like a small design studios and uh, some, some guys who may invent a lot of uh, good products, but, you know, you couldn't expect, I mean, uh, every product like an iPhone or Tesla Model 3 uh, with a demand of like a millions and millions. So that's, I, I would say it would be boring uh, if uh, we have like a, only like a 100 products, right? And in this case, uh, current model cannot, um, cannot uh, suggest anything uh, to resolve this problem. So that's, we found, uh, during our investigation, how we're gonna, gonna resolve it for niche products, we found that the, um, actually uh, factory or modern factory uh, for those niche products uh, must uh, cover the special, I would say, new requirements. So I would call it like a factory as a 3D printer or Lego builder. So what does it mean? It doesn't mean that, uh, you know, it's like a software defined factory uh, when you can printer or build almost anything and uh, you don't you don't need a lot of capital uh, to launch it, and um, especially in the light of recent events with GPT chat and other language model. So I would say that the modern factory must be uh, artificial intelligence driven. So the current um, uh, current manufacturing, despite on uh, its efficiency, I would say it's built like a, I would call it like a haute couture. Every factory is very unique. It's very unique and uh, custom made, I would say. 
I would uh, I would compare it with a, like an old uh, many years ago the the evolution that uh, we did uh, moving from mainframe to PC and data center. I would say, and I believe that we should uh, do something similar in uh, in the manufacturing world. So in, in this case, I mean, so that mainframes mainframes was a really like a, I would say powerful powerful devices, but the same as a modern factory very unique uh, only like a big companies few companies could afford it so that's um and um, here we come so that uh, so that's if we if we like if we remember how it's like a, how it's been done this evolution so that's uh first of all the the there will be like a the, sorry the there was new new architecture modular architecture uh, that said okay instead of like a unique uh, haute couture mainframe let's uh, let's create a simple building blocks like a personal computer of course i'm simplifying the story the there were like uh, there were several uh, several companies but we may say okay the intel came uh, came to the market and say this this is my like a chipset this is my building blocks and um, i can i can like uh, i can uh, perform any tasks like any atomic task in 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 in, uh, in this computer then uh, someone else say, okay, what if we like uh, combine those like a uh, typical computers like a uh, blade servers into the uh, array or data or server set, and add uh, the specific software to run all of them, we will get the data center or cloud uh, cloud computer. So I th um, I think we should do uh, almost the same, and uh, with the team in arrival we came up with this with the same uh, with, with the same solution of building blocks. So that's we call it like a smart cell. The same as a like blade server in the data center, uh, data center. Then um, grid of those smart cells. Then um, uh, we use uh, autonomous mobile robots as a sort of our data bus uh, uh, for um, for our data center. Uh, the third one is a factory OS to control all of those resources and uh, resources and digital VIN uh, to. To, to provide, I mean, to provide the constant uh, real-time states for every 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 object. So that's how how it's going to be designed. I mean, so that's uh, exactly as a Lego builder is just few steps. I mean, so that's when I say design. I mean, so that's for example, you have like a, you have all those blocks in your library. Then you need to design the factory for some product, for example, new vehicle or new like I don't know bicycle or whatever. So that's we will start with a, like as I said with a smart cell. Actually, it's a chipset. Exactly as a motherboard, uh, as a motherboard, uh, with uh, plug-and-play applications and uh, operational system that can run this. I would say like a blade server of our data center. Then uh, it is very important uh, that we moved out everything that is like a, a product dependent. So that's in uh, manufacturing work that's called like grippers, jigs, and fixtures. There's a specific, uh, specific um, I would say uh, devices that hold specific parts of the product. So we move moved it out uh, to keep the architecture of our blade server uh, absolutely agnostic exactly as you know as a blade server was a, you have a uh, processor you have a video card you have sound card you have like a, some memory so this is sort of like a, a unified architecture and uh, by the way those like a jigs and features and grippers that outside of the cell will like uh, transform them into the applications as well so that uh, following the same way so that we just scale it up, those like a cells or blade servers, depending on the load that we need, and uh, add mobile robots that we will develop. Uh, we have developed our mobile robots. Uh, of course, it's still like a quite far from like a carrying beaten beaten bytes. Yeah, but uh, follow the same the same logic. So that's uh, be capable to um, uh, to move everything that is need uh, for the cells or for blade servers to perform their tasks. So then uh, we will use, we call it like a cell ID or cell studio. Uh, actually, the AI algorithms that allow us, um, I would say, to follow the same logics and uh, that we have for like a lot of uh, web applications, low code, it's called low code. So it means that since we like a break uh, this uh, complexity of the factory and transform it into the typical blocks, it's much much easier to generate because at the same time we like break the process or any tasks that are going to be performed uh, by this factory into simple typical operations. Once we've got it, 
it's much easier to generate all of them. So that's unfortunately or fortunately, it like it means that uh, many um, uh, PLC or factory programmers uh, will will lose their job, uh, but they will they they will they will will be able to like to step up and. Uh, uh, teach this this model to be to be more like to be more flexible. So that's once we generate all operations that we need, uh, we just add uh, factory OS. Uh, it's a multi agile uh, multi engine system. What does it mean multi agile system? Uh, it's like um, the system that um, uh, runs by rules. So that instead of like a predetermined uh, routes or tasks or flows for every object um, or for all of them. We use rules that uh, uh, every object or agent in our in our system uh, must follow. So that and then is like you know it's a uh, traffic on the street. Uh, you don't need to you know to 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 plan your route from uh, point A to point B like uh, every every minute of them. You just need to know okay this is a traffic light, this is a crossroads, this is a, like a pedestrians, and then you know depending on the real situation you may change or erode or like uh, detour some uh, some obstacles etc this is that's, this is how uh, this is how it works so in this case i mean it's i would say fully autonomous uh, fully autonomous and uh, based on the rules then digital factory so that's uh, because that's we're going to have a lot of i would say solvent objects on the factory we need a very powerful uh, digital tool to to reflect all of those uh, states and changes of the states because that's the only way uh, for objects uh, or for all of those engines uh, to understand uh, what's going on, what's the, like a if we call it like a, the whole factory as a scene, what's 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 going on at the scene and what's going on with the neighbors. So that's um, this is like a this has been uh, over review of the uh, high level overview of the blocks, uh, and now I would like uh, to touch a bit some details of the chipset. This is like a motherboard of the of the cell. Uh, let me start some videos so you will you will see the real examples so that's um, on the left side you see a sort of uh, product independent uh, infrastructure exactly like a mo motherboard you know some robots uh, some lifters I mean so the equipment that uh, capable to do basic operations um, as we discussed everything that product related like a grippers uh, specific tools and in case of manufacturing it's like a screwdriver glue guns those uh, tools that uh, um, doing actual operations like a bolting gluing welding etc all of them uh, moved out of the cells and uh, we can call them like, uh, plug and play devices or applications and on the right side and on the video you you see the real uh, the real uh, example of the applications with uh amr as a like exactly as a plug and play device uh going in the uh, into the cell uh plugging or like a park and uh, allows uh, everything inside the cell you know to work with this so it's like exactly again as i said motherboard plug and play devices and we will uh, we get uh, this way our computer the typical smart cell so regarding uh, smart cell so it's, uh, the base the base of the sm smart cell is a chipset as we discussed then this chipset uh, covered by a cell operational system and uh, the the main reason for uh, the main uh, task for cell operational system to provide this uh, api api and uh, plug and play interface for all applications and along with this the same as a you know personal computer this Cellos plus chipset, uh, they have uh, typical uh, or basic uh, basic applications like a robotic control, controller, computer vision, uh, motion planning. It's all about like, uh, because that's we're talking about robotic factory. So that's uh, a lot of operations uh, should use, uh, for example, moving of the robots uh, that are like a part of the cell. In this case, we already have like a typical typical applications generating the uh, trajectory for for robot. Every robot uh, follows some program or code uh, to follow the particular trajectory to perform the operations. So, in the typical factory, before the factory start, every operations or sorry, every um, trajectory for robots must uh, must be like a program uh, almost manually. In our case, it's a low code uh, solution. And all of them, uh, all of them generates. On top of that, uh, we use uh, Cell Studio 
that create sort of scenarios or I would say operations that may use um, set of like uh, as many as as we need applications in every scenario. For example, okay, let's glue two parts together. In this case, we need to use, uh, for example, one application to generate trajectory for movement of the robot, and the second application glue gun to be able, you know, to just to squeeze a particular amount of glue on a particular part, and then the second robot move uh, and push those like uh, two parts together. And here we are, we, 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 uh, we get the result. So then uh, mobile robots, so now <clears throat> uh, data bus, as I would say. The problem is, you know, with the traditional factory, if we're using mobile robots as a, like a, uh, as a logistic solution or transportation system, uh, is that, you know, majority of the logistics when, we, when, we, when it takes a conveyor factory is done by conveyor belt. So in this case, the rest of the logistic is not so big, I would say, and very, like, I would say, um, uh, there is a lot of diversity, let's put it this way. So that's uh, loading, unloading, unpacking, uh, you know, some, like, uh, forklifters, etc. This is why, you know, it's quite hard to, like, uh, to develop the mobile robot that could perform all of those operations and and, and going to be still, like, a, I would say, uh, cost-competitive comp uh, to the... Uh, other logistic solutions. This, this is why we have a lot of, on the market, we have a lot of uh, small brands with a specific uh, features. Uh, for example, for moving small parts, uh, one type of uh, mobile robot. For moving big parts, we have another uh, mobile robot, another type of mobile robot. Uh, and they like a different, uh, they, uh, the difference in, uh, of the cost is, is huge. Uh, nothing to say about, not to mention about uh, different types of software and API. So that's, uh, but at the same time, uh, we know that, for example, in warehouses, uh, Amazon or Akado warehouses, this this problem been been resolved. I mean, so that's we saw like uh, hundreds and hundreds of robots uh, performing like a majority of the logistical factory. So that's we uh, followed the same logic. So that we create a sort of uh, typical uh, st standard mobile robot that um, can uh, i would say the unique feature is a cluster mode you can you can see it uh, on the left side of the screen so that's uh, when it needs when for example we need to carry more uh, bigger part or heavy part or larger sizes those uh, those same uh, autonomous mobile robots can act together as much as we need so in our case you can see on the video three robots uh, moving uh, the uh, geo pellet with the whole body uh, that it weight uh, weights uh, more than uh, four tons, and each of AMR uh, mobile robot can carry only two tons, and they're acting together without being physically connected. So that's like a flexibility gives us, you know, the opportunity to use those uh, mobile robots exactly as a, like a data bus, uh, because that's it, they they can be uh, united together or like a uh, split depending on the load or amount of data let's put it this way that we need to uh, to bring to ourselves or like a uh, bring through the logistic system um, the next block uh, factory OS. so as i've said is a, an artificial intelligence system uh, that uh, you know controls and orchestrate all of the all of the objects the core of this uh, effect, uh, of this system is autonomous engine. That's exactly the uh, multi-engine uh, uh, engine uh, that perform any any scenario uh, that we create or scenario means operation that we create for our objects. The one of the remarkable things you can see that it's called uh, factory human machine inter uh, human machine interface. Um, it's quite well-known things, but we uh, renamed it. Uh, we've renamed it. it Mach, um, machine human interface instead of like a human machine interface to highlight that even manual workers on our factory should act uh, sorry for saying that as a bio uh, biological robots so that the key the key like a uh, message of uh, this factory was that factory itself makes all decisions on a factory not 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 human uh, so of course um, uh, we need we need to have a data platform, a special data platform. We will touch uh, a bit of it uh, if you like. I mean, in a different session, 
So that's uh, it would be suffice to say that it's highly loaded data platform because, as I've said, I mean, so it's not only like uh, hundreds of objects on, on the factory, I mean, big objects like AMRs, uh, mobile robots, like, for example, in our factory, uh, we have 150 of them. Uh, but thousand uh, sensors, uh, so every gripper, every uh, smart cell has um, have uh, hundreds and hundreds of them. So in this case, it's a like, huge amount of data, and uh, uh, we need uh, we need to have it in uh, real time. So the digital factory create, I would say, it's a cherry on the cake on our factory. Uh, because it's not only allowed us uh, during the execution, I would say, uh, to uh, to rewrote uh, or recreate the uh, process, but the key the key value of this that allows us uh, to achieve uh, one of those like a cr critical requirements that I touched uh, at the beginning of the uh, of the presentation. So short time to market. So that's a typical factory when we like a design uh, using even like I would say some uh, autom uh, automatization, uh, like a uh, modern software tools, it took us. It takes us uh, usually one year and a half. In the best scenario, usually it's uh, like a two years or two years and a half. This tool, like a digital twin with application uh, hub and with layout studio, allow us to do allows us to do it like in a six nine months. The one of the I would say um, uh, key things is the application hub. You can you can compare it or like I say that this sort of app store uh, for our factory. So in in contrast to the traditional factory, once we have like a typical blocks, and every block uh, like a robotic cells have a typical applications exactly as our iPhone. It means that to create those factory. You may have those like a, a app store or those like applications that are already compatible, follow the like a plug and play interface with a well known uh, capabilities, and you can design it almost uh, without any any engineer. Just combine the though their like capabilities and uh, reflect uh, the requirements of a particular product that you need uh, you need to produce at this factory, and layout studio can generate millions of combinations. Compared to the like, uh, even the best engineers uh, who do who design factories uh, nowadays, so that it's uh, no chance uh, to compete. It just you know we are like a campaign, like a comparing uh, two different scales. So summarizing, what we're gonna have uh, uh, by this factory, I wouldn't say first of all, you know, uh, let me clarify, uh, we're not gonna compete. We're not going to compete uh, traditional factories. I would say this is um, uh, first of all, we're going to cover the niche or like a sector of the market that uh, hasn't been covered yet. So that's if you have one product like a Tesla Model Three or iPhone, you're lucky, <laughs> and it would be it would be better for you to use uh, traditional, uh, very very mass uh, production. But uh, if you have like a much, much uh, less uh, uh, volume, like uh, for example, some of the designers may like uh, expect to sell uh, like 2,000 bicycles uh, a year, right? Or like uh, some niche cars, uh, like a huge van or a specific caravan, I don't know. It's not so, not so like uh, many customers for this. And um, what it gives, first of all, this model can give you low threshold, so that it can be modern production. And just just remind you, we're talking about robots and uh, uh, I would say uh, edge technologies. It can it can be local. This production can be local because that's its start. I would say from uh, twenty millions, twenty or thirty millions for production for capacity like a two thousand uh, objects per year. So that's and it doesn't require the special facility, and uh, that is very important for small companies. Uh, that uh, time to market just a six nine months. So that's product agnostic. That can give us, you know, that um, it's called right now. I would say uh, contracting uh, contract uh, contract manufacturing when uh, you know you can outsource 
your products. There are a lot of companies, not a lot of few companies like Magna, uh, you know, that some others uh, who can uh, take this responsibility. But even in this case, they require from you some like a, a guaranteed level of uh, level of productions. For example, they will not talk to you if you like a less than I would say uh, several hundreds of thousands or uh, sales. Uh, in terms of the in terms of the like uh, enabling enabling uh, the dig digitalization or I would say or new technologies, this factory is much more friendly to the small uh, small like a team small design studios uh, small I would say uh, robotics companies uh, because they know that when if you have like a typical standard uh, architecture, uh, even like a small uh, your small in, uh, inventions like a, for example new screwdriver or new sensor or new application, exactly as we have an iPhone like a even small like a group of people can like a develop some application and then it will be it will be available for uh, people across the world. So that's why when it comes to traditional factory, because it's very like a cohesive, I would say, solid. They don't uh, they don't even talk to like a small companies, uh, small who like a, who come up with like a small solutions because it's not not valuable for them and for big guys. And in this case, I mean that there the, there are no in, in incentives for for those like a small businesses, uh, you know, to, to develop their product. And and this and in this case, I mean only big companies like uh, I don't know. Kuka, you know, Fanuk, uh, ABB, and other like uh, who can uh, who uh, who can deal with those like a big companies. It's such, just a sort of close big community. Only big guys working uh, uh, working together. So we could create a sort of app store and like a boost or uh, embold uh, embold uh, those like those com uh, companies, uh, small companies across the world. Uh, uh, to create to create modern solutions, and um, another remarkable thing that, uh, as I've said, I mean it's like a robots and algorithm instead of people, so that's no management uh, on the factory. I would say everything can be done in cloud. In this case, in my assessment and our assessment with the colleagues, we can um, uh, we can save up to forty percent on the management of the factory. Of course, on the one side, it may uh, mean that we some of uh, our colleagues or neighbors uh, will lose their job. But on the other side, just don't forget that we can bring those like a modern manufacturers, a lot of plants from um, developing markets close to the advanced countries. So that's, uh, and vice versa. For example, uh, there are some, uh, some countries that are still like uh, developing countries in Asia would like to have their own production, but cannot afford them I mean, billion, uh, spending billions and billions. And this is why, with full respect uh, to China, for example, they hold more than sixty percent, more than sixty percent of uh, of the market in in every type of the in every type of the, um, the manufacturing. And uh, this approach, when you can you know spend start spending from uh, fifty million and get the factory that can produce a very complex product like a, a vehicle, it's very very complex product. It's uh, this is a chance. This is a chance for them just to to to, to catch this train, uh, let's put it this way, and uh, be in the world, uh, new world. I mean, with with some like a uh, competitive uh, features and uh, uh, functions. Uh, one second. Just summarizing, as I've said, it's going to be overview. What we uh, what we are using and what we uh, what we discuss. So, so first of all, uh, what I mean first uh, the list the list of technologies that we uh, we've used. First of all, is a modular architecture like a motherboard or blade server and data center. The second one is uh, artificial intelligent multi engine systems software for operational system like a Windows or MS DOS or uh, Linux uh, for our uh, smart cell and factory OS, then the special set of software digital factory create. And again, you, you, you can see like you can notice uh, that uh, all of them uh, just reflect the same that uh, already been implemented in the software, I would say, maybe 10 years already. So that's this is why you know, it's quite easier 
It's not a rocket science. It's not a huge invention. Uh, we we could we could repeat this uh, in the industry that hasn't changed uh, 40 or 50 years already. Autonomous mobile robots as a data bus for our uh, for our data center, and uh, there are there are a lot of uh, remarkable features like a uh, robot slam that makes these uh, mobile robots fully autonomous without uh, you know without uh, need to use some guiding lines and even leaders that very uh, complex so it's a lot of a lot of um, special software and if you like uh, just uh, please leave the comments uh, on the event page uh, and i will uh, i will organize another another, another webinar uh, about all, any of this uh, topic the one of the the one of the topic that i would i would say uh, i can use as a spoiler uh, design design turbo uh, what does it mean uh, i think that many of you already watch uh, the uh, robots uh, love death uh, love robots so how it's like a code properly so it's all about like a design and, and factory capabilities so that's creating this i would say modular scalable factory as a data center who can you know perform any type of task like a mail server or sorry for saying that like a porn hub it doesn't matter for this data center it doesn't matter for this factory is like a 3d printer on the one side we increase all, uh, the uh, capabilities and flexibility on the other side we put some limits on the design so design must uh, design a, a product following the factory capabilities the good example ikea uh, there are designers for designers, I would say, for example, one uh, one group of designers design a kitchen, or I don't know, wardrobes or like a, some sofa. But there is another group of designers who design those like a templates or basic parts for the second group of designers. So, and in the in the, in the IKEA case, the factory is a customer itself with a sort of one range, you know, to 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 assemble everything. But nevertheless those like a designers of the kitchen cannot use any type of parts you know that uh, he wants he can use on the like a sort of templates or uh, restricted um, uh, restricted uh, list of objects uh, uh, that available in some template for example okay this is sort of hinges three five types of them but you can use only of them it doesn't matter for kitchen for wardrobe for whatever so this is like a, this is only uh, available for you so that's uh i would say the future of this you know that to, to use uh i would say the um, uh, even those like i would say uh language models that right now we can see in uh, gpt using in gpt chat you know in the model of google and um, uh, ibm F facebook so that's once you have like a list of capabilities on the factory side then you have like a list of requirements or sort of like a lexems or words on the design side and then if you add on the other side suppliers who must produce those parts or must be capable to produce those parts and depending on the materials we have like a three big data sets that uh, must like a capable uh, to use sort of like a sentence because that's you cannot like a, for example uh, produce anything you want if you design the particular way or particular shape of the part and particular material only a particular supplier can uh, can do it for you and a particular factory can assemble for you so that's i would be in, interested in uh, you know to use api of gpt chat you know to to upload uh, to upload those uh, sets that we already combined and have a look how it can uh, help you i would say design at least anthology of your product if you like uh, write down some requirements it can you know just mathematically mathematically it's possible if you think about this uh, like a, a formula or like i would say model it's absolutely possible it's just a matter of like a, a level of computing so that's a i would say one of the one of the interesting topic that not straightly related to, to robotic technologies but i would say uh, it is absolutely crucial because that's uh, after all this factory or any other factory must uh, produce some product the product drives i mean everything right if there is no product or not compatible product uh, there is no uh, there is no factory needed so a couple of questions uh, before we go to the q and a session uh open task and challenges 
one of them I already highlighted, design, uh, design through perfection. Another one is very challenging, inbound logistics. If you imagine this factory that can, uh, that 3D printer can produce almost everything, and just imagine that all of those products compatible and you like a produce simultaneously bicycle, vehicle, I don't know, uh, um, hire, uh, hire dryer, uh, you know, that's other things. But on the logistics side, it means like uh, that your inbound logistics are uh, going to be much, much more complex. Uh, every supplier wants you know wants to have some like a sort of uh, customer who would like okay i order like a one billion of wheels i i order one billion of tires uh, that's like a, everyone dreams about and in case of our factory multi-product factory that's going to be a nightmare i would say uh it's it's still open task and uh, we need to challenge this model but i would say we need something like a sort of logistic marketplace a sort of like an internal uh, amazon uh model when you like a can combine a lot of different uh, suppliers and using again artificial intelligence uh, intelligent um, to help to find the proper list of suppliers for your particular product for particular factory so that's that's i would say the direction of investigation of this and another thing is zero commissioning unfortunately when it when we have deal with factory compared to the software world it's not so easy because that's we we have a deal with a physical reality, and the physical reality, first of all, mm, uh, has a, like a sort of uh, deviation. So, in that, uh, for example, if you have like a, your product like a uh, metal metal uh, just metal uh, square like a ten uh, one centimeter by one centimeter, and then you like order to someone to produce one million of them, each of them. Every like uh, every item of those million uh, would be different. Tiny, tiny like a um, tiny part of the millimeters, but will be different because of the deviations. In this case, I mean, on your screen, uh, after algorithm uh, algorithm done uh, your jo uh, job and calculation, everything can be looked like a perfect. But when you like uh, come up uh, to the shop floor and start combining all of them. You just realize that uh, it's a sort of Frankenstein that, that doesn't uh, fit to each other. I mean, all of those parts. Uh, before IKEA, I think that's uh, many of uh, you uh, had this experience uh, when you start assembling something and it's like a sort of incline or, you know, not like a, a, geo a geometry perfect. So that's this is why, you know, that uh, there is a project, uh, there is a process that is called commissioning. Commissioning means like a implementing those like a, uh, those things that you develop digitally into the real world and check, because uh, in comparison to the software world, testing and validating uh, your application in the physical world is much much more expensive. Uh, in the software, you can just push the button and see on uh, your screen some like a list of errors, right? Okay, it's fine. Uh, in the physical world, I remember some like old uh, old fashioned video. On, on some factory, there is like a, one of the first uh, robotic cells and four robots uh, standing on the shop floor, and they're like a start operating. And someone just forget about uh, uh, or like made a mistake, had made a mistake on the uh, zero uh, uh, determined the zero point of the floor. So that's and the first movement of those robots they, they broke they broke the uh, the floor. I mean, so that the tenant floor. So it was a disaster. So in this case, I mean, it's like every of your uh, test and validation in the in the physical world may be really like I would say damaging. So that's and but that is the same time if you broke those complexity instead of like a very complex like a series of operations, you have a, like a typical operations. Okay, just bolt, just glue, just you know like a quant uh, quants or like a bit and bytes. In this case, you you may simplify. Not achieve like a, it's not possible to achieve completely zero commissioning because, as I've said, it's just a real physical world with some deviations. But if you simplify it at least 20%, 30%, it would be in terms of the influence on the final product, it would be just, I don't know, revolution. Uh, it would be like a two times uh, cheaper because all of those deviation and commissioning means a lot of additional efforts and uh, a lot of, I would say, scrub, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's going to be much, much faster because this commissioning, it's like a 50% of the 
uh, it, this process takes 50% uh, of the time that you need uh, for launching factory. So that's it from my side for today. And again, thank you for uh, listening. And it's about time for um, Q&A uh, questions that if you have, be free uh, to ask. So that's uh, with, um, oh, Wes, sorry if I pronounce uh, uh, incorrectly. Um, how many vehicles ask, asks how many vehicles have you already produced uh, to prove this concept really working on a scale uh, 20 units so that's um i know it's related uh, with arrival uh, and i wouldn't uh, touch uh, arrival today uh, because again so that's my intention was to uh, highlight or sharing experience uh, that related only factory not uh, the whole arrival because it's uh, first of all for arrival uh, the main product is a vehicle itself uh, but we already proved uh, the cycle time of uh, 25 minutes that enough to produce uh, 7,000 per year on our factory. So that's, it doesn't mean that we have produced 7,000, but we've, uh, we've proved it uh, by producing uh, several, uh, several uh, events uh, at particular speed. So all in all, I would say, correct, what I'm trying to say that uh just let's uh, let's spend like a couple of minutes so even nowadays i mean when we like uh, got i mean new inventions every every day i mean gpt chat you know that's other other stuff i mean uh, at the same time that's uh, everything uh, uh, every mass product that uh, surround us surrounds us being produced in the factory that uh, follow the um, principles that 50 60 years old Again, don't take me wrong. It's very, it's very efficient. But I think it's about time, you know, to 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 come up with something new, to cover those niches that I highlighted. I mean, for small, medium business, for local communities. And again, it's maybe very, very sustainable because, first of all, it's it's supposed to be uh, autonomous factory. It means like a less uh, um, uh, less uh, um, dirty stuff, only robots. On the other side, so that's uh, BI, uh, artificial intelligence driven, it's much, much less energy consumption. And uh, by the way, for local communities, right, so that we can afford it. I know that the business, you know, business follows the money, right, follows, follows the profit. And it's been very, very difficult uh, to compete with uh, some developing countries where like a uh, workforce is uh, very cheap. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's other stuff. I mean, so like a much uh, le less restricted uh, ecological requirements etc it's quite hard you know to compete this this is why like a lot of uh, production been moved uh, was moved uh, to those countries nowadays if we like at least for part part of the products but again don't forget that we're talking about diversity and small and medium companies we can create something that is very efficient for advanced countries that's like it makes me like a very inspired and uh, i would say that's like like uh, this drives me like uh, to continue this job and uh, unrelated with the difficulties that i faced uh, with already so that's let me we have another like a, a few minutes let me read uh, uh, other questions uh, richard uh, asked uh, what companies and uh, countries use that technology you know, that's first of all, I would say that's not only us who came up uh, with these ideas. Uh, and by the way, it just proves that is a, like a right way. When you have, when you have only you, like you're thinking about, so that's uh, come up with some ideas. So that's some, so sometimes you like just start thinking, okay, maybe I'm just mad and crazy and it's not going to work. Uh, <clears throat> but I already read a lot of, um, a lot of articles, a lot of information across the world uh, with similar, similar, similar concept. But no uh, other factory has been launched yet. Well, in this case, uh, the answer is like a no one. But it's quite, quite, I would say, close to that. I would say even uh, make it even uh, more straightforward. It will happen quite soon with you, with me, or without us. So someone else will implement it quite quite soon it's unavoidable 
so that's when you say product agnostic that the uh ILRA, sorry if i pronounce your name incorrect asking uh, uh when you say product agnostic does it mean that range of vehicles that use of set of common bill of materials uh wider i would say as a 3d printer you know if you imagine 3d printer right so that's your like um uh, your limits only the um, volume of the chamber right or your camera oh sorry chamber like a dimensions x y x y z and material right okay the metal or plastic ppgf or whatever the same for this factory it is driven by sizes weight materials and type of joints the last one is the most important for example this factory like uh, compared to the printer if you have like a for example la laser uh, color printer that can like a uh, print uh, green blue yellow etc right that's exactly for this factory for example the factory that we've developed can bolt uh, glue uh, fds fds is a flow uh, uh, flow flow um, the screw the type of screw that can create a sort of hex or um, a threat uh by the torque and you melt and melt the material so that's and insert so that's if you if you design the product that compatible in terms of the sizes and say it, uh, there are like uh, some particular uh, limits uh, like a three meter long uh, three meter high uh, sorry uh, eight meter long meters long three and a half meters high and uh, three meters wide um and uh, the um, uh, the weight of the max weight of the maximum the biggest part uh not uh, more than uh, 300 kilos we can assemble it and uh, you have like only those type of joints bolt glue of ds we can assemble whatever it, uh, it's going to be bicycle or vehicle bigger vehicle smaller vehicle part of the i don't know even like i would say jet i don't know some like a plane uh, can you make uh, flying vehicles as well? That, yes, I've said. I mean, so it, it, it's like a, it is a matter only like a type of joints and materials. That's it. Of course, I mean, when we talk about like a different product, there may be different uh, controls or quality checks. Uh, but this like a quality checks is a, like a compatible processes that you can like a, uh, put a, put along with the, your like a factory to check the quality of the product uh, at the end of the line. And by the way, don't forget that it's not actually a line, it's a matrix or a robotic forest when you have like a virtual conveyor for every product. It means that you can assemble products with a different length of sequence of operations. For example, for some like a smaller product, like or simply a product like bicycle, you need to like to do, I don't know, 10 operations, like a two, I don't know, two wheels, uh, uh one like a uh, saddle and uh, some stuff like this for a complex product like a flying uh, you, you need to perform like a 1000 of them and those like a virtual converse of virtual production process will be very very different but can go through the same like a blade servers just a uh, less uh, this number of uh, this number of operations is this technology exclusive to arrival uh i wouldn't say uh, so that's we're thinking right now about um, polishing those technologies as a product or set of products uh, to to use outside of arrival. Yeah, but I wouldn't say uh, that's something like a, there is no any like a business plan or whatever. Just don't take me wrong. So that's uh, I I'm not saying on the company behalf right now. I'm saying as a like a research and developer. Uh, so this, uh, this te I would be happy uh, if these technologies will uh, will, uh, will be used uh, outside of arrival. Let's put it this way. Um, it was a question from uh, Kale. Uh, so that's uh, um, Michael, if I'm not mistaken, or Mitchell. Sorry, again, just don't. Don't don't push me for this those mistakes. I'm, I'm, I really apologize. Very interesting on HMI. Uh, why was it changed to MH, M, MHI? As I said, I mean just to highlight the decision. All decisions of the fact it is run by uh, artificial intelligence. So that's those for those operations very sophisticated. Like uh, for example, installing the harnesses because it's very flexible. It doesn't make sense still in terms of the cost uh, to perform by robots. It's like it's not com uh, compatible. 
sorry, competitive. Uh, but it's even in this case, those uh, operators uh, will follow instructions and decisions uh, that been done by by machine. So that's no uh, compared to the traditional factory. They always, I would say, not only factory, some complex systems. They always like there are always some people who control it and to make a decision, and then like a, a machine will follow those decisions. I would call it like automation. In our case, we have autonomy. There is a big difference between automation and autonomy. If you would like, we can organize uh, another session to explain the difference. So that's one like a uh, automation and just help you in the particular areas of your process to make it like a faster. For example, you use like a sort of just a small like a small tool uh, to dig your holes and then you okay you bought the excavator or some like a machine who, who can done it like a faster and uh, much more volume so that's exactly how automation uh, usually uh, works autonomy is completely different so that's you said i mean uh, the logic is driven by uh, artificial intelligence so that's uh ira uh, if i'm not mistaken uh I have seen other technologies uh, that claim uh, uh, cat design to actual product using cell manufacturing. Yeah, that's that's correct. I mean, that's I would say it, it makes me uh, it makes me even more happy because you know that's if someone else uh, and I would say very uh, very smart people uh, trying to implement uh, the same. It means that's a really good idea, and uh, because that's industry is very resistant. I would say. I mean very uh, a lot of legacy on the one side on the other side it's very capital uh, intensive and very sophisticated the more like a companies or more initiatives like this uh, the better because that's uh, you know that's we cannot we cannot change i mean so 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 huge area uh, just by one or few teams uh, that makes me even more happy that uh, the more uh, the, uh, there are a lot of uh, people doing the same. Uh, so we have uh, five minutes left. Uh, again, thank you. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, be free to um, uh, continue a raise question on the event page. And again, so I understand that it's quite specific topic, to be honest. Uh, and we've touched, I mean, I would say only high level uh, description of, the, of all of those technologies. But if you would like, just leave uh, some comments uh, and uh, on the event, and I will organize uh, the specific session for any topics uh, about any topics that we've touched today. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think that's where uh, Arthur is asking where to follow you for new events. So that's I will I will left my LinkedIn. And I will continue presenting, doing uh, webinars on Cody Mentor, if you don't mind. So that's if uh, if you suggest something else, so that would be happy. Um, so as I understand, uh, according uh, Cody Mentor, this li link of re uh, recording will be uh, available on uh, their YouTube channel in one week. And I think that once 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 I've got this link, I will post it on the uh, event page. Uh, on a Cody Mentor, um, and uh, don't be afraid. I mean, this page will be available uh, even after event finish. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Antonio. Yeah, it's been it's been really great pleasure to talk to you, colleagues. I would call it your I would call you your uh, as a colleagues if you don't want it, because everyone who is in, interested in robotic technologies is a colleague for me. Yeah, thank you.